My name is uh, Tony Mungai Hutia Nyoto. Um, first, um, I'm a father of four, uh, married. Um, I also have uh, different programs that I run. I've started a few companies. Uh, so I own uh, an IT consulting firm. Uh, I also own uh, the firm called uh, NED. This is Eden, where I do a lot of this counseling, mentorship for boys and girls, uh, where we are now doing the divorce care ministry for, for both men and women. Um, I also do farming. I'm passionate about doing uh, Nyamachoma. So I do a lot of good, nice nyamachoma that you can come and have. That's become a passion. So yeah, that was, uh, it's around uh, now, should be maybe around 10 years ago. That's when I got divorced. My foundations were all shaken. Because first of all, when I was getting married, I, was nev I never thought that I would be ever divorce. Okay? I was not getting married to get divorced. For me, it was marriage and that's it, until death, right? So when you get to a point that you get divorced then, you become disoriented, you become... Uh, you, you don't know because that was one of your pillars in your lives, right? So it became an issue because then I had to go and find myself, okay? Uh, first, the friends that you had, most of them disappear. Right. The church that you used to work in or be in and, and uh, serve in start treating you in a certain way. It's like this sick person. And I always call it, uh, they treat you like a person with leprosy. And they tell you, stay out of those gates. Right. So where you have, uh, where you had your foundations, where you had things that you are doing here, you are not able to do them now. So you don't have friends, you don't have that church you go to. At work, of course, you can't talk about it. You're getting uh, uh, affected even in how you do your work. Um, the other part is even family now. Uh, you have people who are separated, I mean, have different views of what you should do and so on. So in essence, it actually, I had to do a reset button of my life to be able now to, um, to start all over again. Because friends, I have to get new friends, in essence. Uh, I had to move church and go to a new church. Uh, luckily, I started a new job that gave me a second chance and I was able to, to start uh, because it was crazy where I was, things were just going south. So it affects all facets of your life. Your relationship even with your kids, right? Uh, become 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 something else, right? So it, it affected me, and I had to restart all over again um, in in this journey. We we most of the time throw the burden of divorce to women because we say that women are the ones who are supposed to um, to take care of the home, to hold the home. The Bible talks actually about the women destroying their homes with their own hands it's fact okay however we forget that part that the man is the head of the home okay if this goes wrong it's like a president in the country okay that means if it goes wrong it's not the ministers and the rest i know now we are doing the ministers and so on it's about it backstops with the president you chose these guys you did what and so on at home it's also supposed to be the same way however men um, probably it's because of them not even talking about it so much it's because they hide behind the part of you being a man and probably being easier for you to maybe start another relationship which then covers what happened in the previous one, right? Even probably without working through yourself, okay? The truth of the matter is this. A relationship is two-way. You can never relate with yourself. You have to have the other party. Yeah. And that's why the Bible talks about two people can never work together unless they agree. Very good question. So what happened is this. Um, as I told you, I got this farm and then uh, now I used to, of course, as men, we love this Nyamachoma. We would do this like road trips and all that. So every time I would go there with men, they had planned to come back. Then they just go there, enjoy too much. And then they say, we are not coming back. So I have to look to you, Matres, to Lalechini, we get to our tents or what. And I, I start looking for even areas where they can be able to sleep and all that. Then 
hey, go to me, you guy, man. You have all this land, what are you doing with it? So he decided to come up with, with the resort side where then you'll have a place where people can come because what happened is nobody wanted to be coming and going back, okay? Because when you come there, you get free, you get to release. And then I realized, as I said, a lot of time as even men, when we go out there, we'll go to a bar, have a drink, watch football, make noise, go back to our problems. We never stop to actually talk about it and have those real issues discussed, okay? This is a place you leave town, you're away from everybody else, and you can, nobody has judgment on you. So you can be able to come and discuss anything. And I made it deliberate that I don't even have um, TVs and all those things there. You will come and we are discussing real issues. The other issues, if you want to discuss them, go to Nairobi, to your club and so on. But when you come here, we want you to come and discuss those issues that have been affecting you to give you that oomph to go back into the society with a second chance or a reset button. Do we sit down to ever ask ourselves, uh, why am I doing what I'm doing? Okay, we never get to that point. And then in corporates, we sit down, we have all these strategy meetings, all these planning meetings, all this. But never do we do that as men, to actually strategize and, uh, and plan for our families, uh, for our lives and all that right we never do that so this was a place now where people could come for example as men and have those conversations women are also coming now because i've gotten a lot of requests so women also come and are able to have that and also we are having groups coming together now men and women where they come and have those open conversations between the two uh, the two genders and i've been saying most of the time dating is a facade why, why say that because when you're dating, you never bring out the bad side. Every time you go for a date with this person you like, you come out the best. And you work out to make sure you're the best. Until now you get to that home, then the real you comes. So I've been dating a different person than the one I meet in the house. Because it's been deliberate. Uh, it's actually constructed. I mean, it's like a movie. I decided to have I even I even have for this date. Because you're selling yourself. I am selling myself. Everybody's selling. So it's it's a sales process. So after selling, when you're consuming the product, that's where the rubber meets the road, and that's the biggest problem. Okay. So you need to have those honest, real conversations with people. So. First, the challenges that, that, that men uh, uh, endure when going through divorce is that denial of you seeing your children, okay? Uh, unfortunately, ladies take that as an advantage, okay? That's their wild card, right? Uh, this guy is not providing, this guy made me sad, this guy made me unhappy. They withdraw the children from you, uh, which is really, really, really traumatizing for men. As I told you, you you've lost your friends. You, your company, you don't even know if you're, you, I mean, you're having issues even in your work because they go through those emotions also. This is a person that you've been living with for a certain number of years. It's a person you committed to. You had options of marrying many, but you made a decision to get this one. So there's a lot of those things that are happening to them. Then you actually have the last thing that you probably could hold on, the children, then she takes them away. She's living with them, so she has some kind of, familiar environment of the kids but you you've been removed to that whole uh, equation most of the time what they don't realize and uh, and we're having this conversation actually the other day during those divorce care classes is the ladies and we had a joint class the ladies were shocked to find out that the men also cry the second part is um, uh, uh, men and that part of being the provider always thought that now uh, that we are going through divorce they have we have to pay these big uh, maintenance fees actually to sustain all this uh, lifestyle okay that time we've said you're also having problems you're probably you're even losing your job okay a lot of men who are going through this and have discovered and i don't know why they actually lose their jobs okay they don't even have another source of income that they had prepared for so they're not even financially stable to continue but that's when you're told you have to pay X, you have to pay Y, you have to pay all this. And the guy is wondering, where am I all getting all this uh, stuff from? The, the third part is men don't have 
and because as, as what we said, you've been conditions to kazia and be mwanaume na unijikaze, they don't talk this to their friends. And probably most of their friends have not gone through this. And as men, you know, we, we, are, we are structured and made to come up or, or give solutions to problems. So this is like a problem. I don't even know where to start from. And that's why I will tell you as a man, maybe Mendy will tell you, uh, come, let's go have a drink. Drink your sorrows out. Tomorrow you'll wake up with them. Get another chick uh, and move on. It doesn't. So you find that you don't have friends who can be able to uh, walk with you this journey. And that's why now we've, we've structured these uh, groups of men going through the same coming together and sharing and walking. So you have, you have like a support group, right, that you're able to go with and hold each other, right, through this journey. You have to accept that this has happened, okay? Because most of the time, men, you don't want to feel like you have failed. So you stay in this denial stage of this thing has not happened, even when it has happened, okay? So the first thing is you have to go and... Uh, and accept this thing has happened. So when it has, when you've gotten that point, then you now come up with a plan on what be able to do. Secondly, you need to get support, right, uh, of people who've gone through this, right, uh, uh, who can then help you towards uh, the different steps and journey because it's a process and a journey, right. Number three, you have to actually go even before you start other serious relationships, and we don't want to lie that you won't be seeing other people, you might, but before you start and commit into other serious relationship, you have to go and have a kamushamani or kamkutano with yourself yeah. and find out what is it that I did wrong in this relationship? What was my part in the failure of the first relationship? Because we don't do an audit, we don't do a post-mortem of that relationship before uh, jumping into others. So you have to do a post-mortem uh, of, of that relationship and find out what is it that was my part that made that relationship not work. 